going up. Nothing moving. Oh, they, what, what is that? What just moved? Is it a door handle? Did the door open? Don't want to know what's in there. Nope. Nope. And welcome to GT Not Live, where today we are in for some more scares. We are going back to finish reacting to slash lightly analyzing the Mandela catalog uh, because I got a theory about it. Uh, I'm working on it right now, in fact, and as I'm kind of digging through all this stuff, I'm like, well, let's watch it together. Let's theorize about the last three videos that we haven't covered yet. I believe this is officially the end of season one of the Mandela Catalog, so these last three videos kind of constitute like the end of the first part of this story or, you know, at least kind of what's being released as of now. We'll see where it goes from here. Um, but last time, in case you forgot, first off, go watch that episode. It was a lot of fun. Uh, super creepy. There's definitely some very scary stuff mixed into here. Uh, but it's a continuation, for the, just to catch you up on what you need to know for today, uh, as I remember, it is a continuation of the analog horror genre. Uh, so this is another one of those like creepy told through old camcorder footage, oh, weird PSA style videos that would air on like an old television, things like that. Um, and it's telling us the story, well, it, it seems like it's telling us a couple different stories, right? So the first video had all this religious imagery, uh, basically the angel Gabriel comes down from heaven to talk about the birth of Jesus, but it was an alien or it was something else, but basically it was this other entity that was able to assume the identity or the face of humans and disguise itself. And at the end of that video, we get the revelation of something saying like, I deceived them, humans have such weak minds. Uh, and then a, another person in that video kind of talks back, says like, you know, I was weak, I will be remembered for my foolishness, uh, what have I done basically wrought to the world, right? Uh, and then from there we flat, fast forwarded to 1980s, because everything scary apparently has to happen in the 80s, uh, the scariest decade of them all, uh, where we get some PSAs from a, a temporal time government agency, so some have to do with uh, time blips. So basically this is Spider-Man into the multiverse, uh, and across the, across the Spider-Verse at this point, um, where we meet alternates. So they are these human-like doppelgangers that are able to very closely mimic human faces and personalities, uh, but they can also be differentiated or identified via uh, weird extended limbs or oversized body parts or like being half completed or, or kind of like half transformed. Uh, we learn about a, a person who kind of had a run-in with these characters. I believe it's, it's Mark, uh, Mark Heathcliff and his buddy uh, Cliff. I've, Heathcliff and Cliff, that doesn't make sense. I forget what his buddy is. Caesar, Caesar, Caesar and Mark. Uh, where one of them has a run-in with this thing, uh, the mother had been turned into an alternate, it's believed, and ultimately he's trapped in his room, uh, I believe this is Mark, is trapped in his room by one of the alternates trying to lure him out, he doesn't give in, and then eventually uh, tries to take down the alternate, but the alternate uh, kills him. So, I think that's kind of all the highlights. There's different levels of alternate, there's the ones that are like perfect doppelgangers, there are the ones that are, you know, uh, you can tell that they're a little off and then there's the or they have like weird extended arms or whatever and then there's the ones that are just like real bizarre and like half formed um so that's where we're at we've got three other videos here that i'm hoping to get through today uh so that way then i have everything and i'm all equipped for the eventual theory that we're doing on this thing so join me won't you as we explore the rest of the Mandela Catalog here on YouTube. Uh, great horror, analog horror series. So starting here with Intruder Alert. I feel like I've seen this circulating a lot, uh, this image. But, uh, oh, that's right, at the end of the last one, speaking of intruders, at the end of the last one, there was uh, an interview or kind of like a, like a child therapy session with a kid named Mark, presumably our Mark, uh, maybe Mark Heathcliff, uh, where he says there was a scary man in this house, he was an intruder, and then the intruder's face shows up at the end and it's creepy. Uh, so seeing intruder alert might connect it back to this guy. We're not sure. 
Um, I think it's a different face though, so maybe not. So here we go. Mm. It's, a, it's a face that I'm excited to see. Like, what a way, what a way to start off. Also great choice of face. Guys, super creepy. Nice, great. I'm <laughs> makes you feel good. Good way to start things off, huh? Okay, so Mandela County Child Endangerment Awareness Association presents. Okay, so our PSA for the day. What do we got? Keep an eye on your children. T tell you what, man. Ali will not Let's let us. Face it. us not keep an eye on know this how time-consuming it is to keep an eye on our young children. It's true. While it's working is essential. They must receive attention from us so that they know we love them too. Yep. It's a, it's a, it's a tough balance to strike, Matt. Let me tell you, as a father, this is, this is hitting real hard. Mandela Catalog sees me. I feel seen by Mandela Catalog right now. Because it is. You, we give a lot of attention to Ollie. We give a lot of attention to work. No attention to myself. Where's, where's the attention to Matt Pat right now? Can you give me some attention? I think that's a thing you gotta, you gotta talk to yourself about. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't think I can fix that. Can you not? No. Please fix me. Please fix me, Matt. <laughs> I simply work here. <laughs> <laughs> Part of your job description is fix Matt Pat. There it is. Sometimes Matt Pat will appear broken and beaten down and depressed. Stop him. <laughs> Force him to work more. Thank you. Here we go. Some of us may rely on key things that keep them entertained, okay. like toys. The abacus. Every kid loves an abacus. Or even cartoons on the family television. Mm. Because oh, that's creepy. Oh, I don't love it. Yeah, he's the worst. He, it's a creepy face, man. Oh, that is a creepy face. It's like a normal guy, but the, the contrast and effect that they've layered on, it's so disturbing. Be cautious with what channels your children view on the television, since you never know what harmful content they may be seeing. Or YouTube, honestly. YouTube is just just a bottomless pit. Um, Ali likes watching water tower videos every once in a while. Um, but, like, if we walk away for a second, he's suddenly, like, being indoctrinated into, <laughs> into, into something. It's not true. Uh, but it's, it's not that far off where, like, He'll go from, like, water towers tipping over and then, like, however, like, three clicks later or whatever, you look over his shoulder and, and like, oh, what are you watching now? And you're like, oh, my gosh, what are you watching? You know, not, not nothing extreme, but not stuff that you're like, I'm comfortable with you watching this. Keep him far away from, we keep him far away from Coco Melon. Just say no to Coco Melon. Your children may be viewing elements of violent content, sexual Coco content, Melon. graphic content, scary imagery. They exist on different spectrums. If you hear your child screaming or crying. So, interesting. Uh, initial thoughts here are, okay, so we went from, like, Bible time at the beginning to, we fa it, it's a weird time jump that we're starting at, like, here's the Bible and, and, and God and Jesus, and now we're flipping forward to, like, modern times. Makes me think that, like, is the message of these alternates or are the message of the this like alien or this series of creatures or whatever it seems like it's being spread through television through medium uh media uh to like indoctrinate people or steal them away or blind them or something so this is interesting wait until your child stops making noise before entering the room you will no not loving this Oof. Nope. This hits hard. That is not applause. No one is applauding their automatic closed caption. Oh, I hate this. This is... Ah! Nope! I, it, it's so effective. Because it's, it's literally nothing but... <laughs> Sorry. Automatic closed caption. Foreign. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, automatic closed captions on YouTube. Hmm. Weird. In the words of McDonald's, ba 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 ba, I'm not loving it. 
Okay. She's ascending to heaven. She's rising up. What is this? She's oh! Oh no! Oh no! She pulled it. She pulled a Sayori. Wait, 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 what? Sorry. Sorry. Nope! Distraught at the sight of her missing infant. And the, the bed is now a coffin. You that is uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> that is super uncomfortable. Um, so the man, the intruder, the, the man in the TV is taking kids? Is he the, what is he? Emergency alert system, local authority has issued an immediate safety warning for multiple counties. It's not laughter. I don't know, YouTube, how you're seeing this as laughter. Local authorities have issued an immediate safety warning to multiple counties. Please await further instruction. Okay. 3,000. Now, a total of 1,426 children have gone missing huh. in the so following they're, counties. So they're attacking Blackburn kids. County, Berkshire County, Mandela County, Mandela County, Yonder Mandela Catalog. Deter vulnerable children away from any television medium that can project possibly frightening imagery. It's frightening imagery. Huh. Man, emergency alert systems have just the, the scariest sound effects. Like, there's a reason why... Huh. There's a reason why this stuff is so effective. It's because, like, emergency alerts by on their own are just scary. After receiving neighboring noise complaints of prolonged childlike crying following followed by a loud crack, an investigator was sent over to survey the home... Sorry. Survey the home in the form of photos and videos. Prolonged childlike crying. Followed by a loud crack. So this is primary victim's home. So this is following up on what we just witnessed. The woman being distraught. I'm assuming that this is following up on the woman being distraught, um, taking her own life, the baby missing. So we heard the crying, the loud crack is the snapping of a neck, I suppose. Uh, and now, so they're looking into this. After taking the previously shown photo, the investigator reported feeling an overwhelming sense of dread and left the scene immediately. I mean, I don't blame you. In order to provide security until another investigator was available, an on-site officer volunteered to set up a camera that took one photo every five minutes facing the room that the event occurred in. Facing the room that the event occurred in. Okay. So we are outside of kind of the kid's room. So that's presumably the kid's room that she went into. Image one, oh, sorry, one second. Image one, 3.34 a.m., threat level none. Okay. I, I like that the camera has a threat level attached. Like this old school 80s era camcorder just is able to detect threat levels. Threat level, midnight. Image one, okay, 3.34 a.m. So this is when we're starting things. 3.39, so this is... Five minutes later, threat level none. Apparently the lights turned out. That's great. <laughs> threat level vague. 520, so we're image 21, so we're far away. So threat level vague. No, it's gone, okay. Nope. Threat level evident. So is he different from the entities, the like alternates? Nope. Ooh, hello. Vi uh, victim's corpse is being is seen being tampered with by invisible force. This is six forty. Image thirty. Threat level evident. Victim's corpse is being. So this is 26, so four images later, basically, by an invisible force. That's 
real strange. And now it's gone. The suspect shown in the evident images is completely unidentifiable at this time. The entire department has ruled out the possibility of it being an alternate. Said images will be sent to the higher ups for further analysis. The suspect shown in the evident. So it's not an alternate. Previously shown evidence must not and will not be released to the public for any reason. Lieutenant Davis. Huh. Weird. So you have this guy. This guy. The intruder, as it were, coming into people's homes or, like, broadcasting TV messages that are, like, stealing kids, corrupting kids, making them disappear. But he also... It, it, it's being so and, and he's not an alternate. So he's not connected to whatever the, like, weird alien species is or whatever that is doppelganging humans. Or maybe he is, but and the alternates are his army. But So he himself is not an alternate. And he has the ability to, like, do an invisible force to, he, to tamper with people's bodies. Weird. What do you think, Matt? I'm lost. It, 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 it's weird. It's, it's like four different things, it seems like, all mixed together, right? Because you have the, like, alternates and this, like, alien species... That, that was set up in kind of the first one in the, like, religious connotations. You have this guy who is kind of like a like a cult leader almost of sorts, um, broadcasting his message, stealing kids, corrupting kids, whatever, take it, but kids are disappearing. Parents then are offing themselves, and then their bodies are getting manipulated? It's very, you ever watch Channel Zero? No, what's Channel Zero? Uh, I think it's called Channel Zero. It was a creepypasta, they turned it into a show, but it's a, it's oh, cool. like a... A Sesame Street type show takes over children's brains. Really? Mm -hmm. That sounds fantastic. It's really good. I was gonna say that sounds up our alley. Yeah. Really? Check it out. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's like don't hug me. I'm scared. Almost. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. But it, it has the power to make kids like kill their parents and stuff. Oh, fantastic! Mm -hmm. Oh, great! Awesome! Mm -hmm. Love it. So maybe we won't uh, put that one on Ollie's watch yeah, list. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we avoid that one. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got. Okay. Next up, we're gonna go with. Medical Awareness Disorder Teaser. I like that it has a teaser for what? The finale, I guess? Okay, so slow play. Channel 3. Oh, they switched to the super long play, so we got to make sure we capture it all. Prevent yourself and your family from going mad. Mad. Metaphysical Awareness Disorder is a fatal mental illness that has been making a sudden return in recent months. 95% increases in mad cases. So, okay, 1982... Um, if I remember right, the temporal agency, the government agency, the temporal agency, whatever it was from a couple episodes ago, uh, was 1981. It was established in 1981, so the year after it's established, you see a huge increase in whatever mad. Metaphysical awareness disorder. Let's think about that. Okay, metaphysical awareness. So, uh, you are made aware of your presence. Oh, Actually, this is interesting. Okay, so if the alternates exist in other spectrums, right? Because that was something that we, we just saw. They, they exist in other spectrums. If they exist in other spectrums, maybe that means in, like, different planes of reality. So we're dealing with, like, our three dimensions, four dimensions of time here. And these alternates or this intruder or whoever exists in a different plane of awareness, right? Or a different plane of reality where they're able to physicalize themselves, but also can disappear or turn invisible, maybe. Um, so this disorder where you are made aware of something, uh, that it, it prompts you to go mad. Let's, here, let's, here, let's keep watching. Maybe this will make more sense. Mad development demonstration. Patient is on the left. So this is how you get it. Here we are. This is us. Do, 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 do. Going to get our Starbucks coffee. Living our best life. Okay, just I want to make sure you close it. Was that anything or was that just a bunch of... Just auto-generated? Yeah, that's just that. Okay. 
So, okay, so we see them phasing in and out of reality here. So they are able, I think this is going back to what we yeah, just saw. Is a result. I think this is going back to what we just saw, which is the intruder and maybe the other entities, we're not sure about the alternates, are able to phase in and out of reality. And that's why we see him kind of phase in. He tells us the truth about our state in the world or whatever, and then he phases away, and then we get this mad thing. Exposure to local information that is not desired to be known. Okay, there you go. The rate of death by suicides in patients diagnosed with MAD is 97%. But don't worry. The remaining 3% makes it worth trying to reverse the delusion. 3% proves the effectiveness of delusion reversal. Okay, that's weird. Um, delusion reversal. Okay. That's a that's a real bad. Avoiding real the bad root causes rate. of metaphysical awareness disorder development is the first step to being safe. First, avoid excessively frequent religious practices. Avoid, avoid unnecessary beliefs and philosophical implications. Last but not least, looking after your loved ones is a key factor for maintaining mental stability. Avoid opening your eyes when you're certain that the man in the corner is in fact now inches away from your face. Watching. Mandela Catalog Volume 2 Recurring Nightmares. Coming soon. No, apparently not. Okay. Okay. So... That's, huh, this is really interesting. Okay. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Um, this whole story seems to revolve around people being told some divine truth or not and being misled, right? So in the very first episode, uh, we get, you know, the angel, angel coming down telling Mary and Joseph something, de basically deceiving them, and then disappearing. And, and that kicks off all the problems of the world, right? Um, and so it makes me think that there's like some divine truth or some lie that's being perpetuated or told in this world that is causing people to develop this mad disorder um, you know, and it's, it's kind of like corrupting everyone. The avoid religious practices is interesting. So, and, and, and part of the thing, part of the critical thing that you have to do with this stuff is like, who is, like, earlier in video two, we saw that the broadcast got corrupted by whatever the entity was, by the alternates. Um, cause at one point it's, it's like the think system, right? It's like, tell the authorities find help and then like the k was was uh, off yourself right um and then it was like no your place in the universe and that you know everything's finite or whatever so the video itself was getting corrupted by the alternates this seems to be not that this seems to be an actual psa to to benefit people which would imply that the delusion that we're, we're being told a delusion that like, what, that there's an afterlife? That there is another plane of existence? And that we can access it? And that we want to access it, which causes us to then, you know, off ourselves, which then, but you can remove it, right? The 3% are able to get the delusion removed. So we're being told, we're being fed a lie by these alternates or whatever these entities are, but then it can be removed. Weird. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot to parse through. Um, it's pretty complicated. Anything Anything to add, Matt? I'm, as I'm just like thinking through this in real time, because I, I know I'm rambling and my thoughts are kind of unfocused, but it feels like there's a lot going on that I'm trying to make fit together into a, a more cohesive or like tight narrative. And it's just, try like we have a we have a bunch of pieces right now and you can roughly see where in the puzzle they fit together but they're just not gelling together yet yeah the only thing i see is the man in the corner bit like how does that play in 
What man in the corner? Is it the intruder? Oh. That's what I'm... Th Avoid opening your eyes when you're at certain that the man in the corner is, in fact, now inches away from your face. Because at the end of the first one... So here, real quick. Let's just... Real quick. So at the end of the first... Because that makes me think of the end of the first one, right? Which was... end of the first one or... no it wasn't in the first one it was end of this one so end of this one had this moment where we see this guy right oh. the... and then we move to the next one which is the story of uh caesar and mark and the mother right, right. so I'm thinking this is the mother potentially seeing the man in the corner and then in the next installment we hear what happens, which is my mom's gone crazy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's chasing me. It followed me home, whatever. And so I'm thinking that that is the man in the corner, okay. right? Either this entity or the intruder. It's one of the two. Maybe they're one and the same. Like, And I think that's that's the weird thing that I can't quite wrap my head around. If the intruder isn't an alternate... What is he? Is he part of this? Is he Gabriel from the beginning? Is he trying to fight against this stuff? What is his role in the story? I don't know. Maybe he's Doctor Who. Temporal. Oh. The, 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 that's it. He's the new Doctor. It's, it, this is the, the unofficial continuation of Doctor Who. Um, and I joke about that, but it ties in yet another one of those like weird details here that just... I can't quite figure out where it wraps into this, which is the the temporal time, the government of temporal whatever, whatever, right here. It's right, this United States Department of Temporal Phenomena, right? So this tells us that there's some time element attached to this, that there's either it's, it's speaking across time or there is a time traveler or something here, because why else would there be a temporal phenomena thing here? Why would there be a time theme? Because nothing has related to that. There's been a religious theme. There's been, you know, this like extraterrestrial brainwashing feeling. We're being told truths. There's a metaphysical plane of existence that people are phasing in and out of. I feel like it has to be tied here. So is there like a, also you have Mark at age four talking about this intruder that it seems like he meets and kind of has to fight against when he's much older. So there's this weird convergence of time that's happening as a part of this story that I'm not sure how it all fits in. Um, so maybe this guy's a time traveler and he's warning us about, you know, the entities or something and he's trying to train up kids or stealing kids. Huh, that's interesting. Because now, because in that one, Intruder Alert, we learned that 3,000 kids have been, have disappeared and Mark, at age four, saw an intruder. He didn't disappear though. But he had one of the three percent that his delusion was reversed, maybe. Could be. Well, it seems like the kids aren't necessarily. I don't know if the kids are dying. It seems like the parents are, and the adults are. Oh. But I think the but the kids are disappearing. We're not finding dead kids, unfortunately. You know, our our whole I know our I know it's 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 dark. But our our whole our I know our whole shtick is the dead kid thing. Um. Yeah, it's. There's, there's a piece missing, and I think, and maybe I haven't seen it yet, maybe it's part of this last installment here, um, but there's something missing that feels like it's going to tie this all together, or maybe that's the theory, maybe that's what our film theory is going to ultimately amount to, is like, how does this all congeal? Uh, so let's hop into the last one, and then we'll take it from there. Hopefully this kind of ties up a lot of these loose ends, or at least gives us some connections or, or pieces that we've been missing so far. All right. Very dramatic opening. Okay, you got like operator. Busy tone. I wonder if that song has anything to do with anything. The, wow, this is Noah went out of his house. Weird. What a what a, hold up. What a weird way to start it. What does that mean? Does that mean anything? Or is that just like dramatic 30-second opening for the piece? 
Like you are, it feels very artistically done. Unless it's that song, but Noah then the went out of his house for some fresh Oh, sorry. Let me yeah. make sure that the captions are on. There we go. So we're back to the biblical stuff. <laughs> knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Sorry, I just want to rewind this real quick. I thought I saw a glitch. There was jumping there, but I think that was just the bad anim. Yeah, just like the weird animation. Yeah. And that was where it was on the transition screen. I was curious. No, just a, just a window classic window shade transition. Ooh, hey, hey, hey! You see that? Uh, two. Oh, oh, I think I know what this is. Is this the, um, type two? Type two uh, alternate? The type two alternate is what? The doppelganger, the, oh, shoot, I forget what type two is, but whatever that is. D, P, L, E. Yeah, this, whatever this is, it, it's a type two alternate overlay here. So is, so is Noah a type two? Is Noah type two? <laughs> Or is what he's going to be speaking to type 2? And no one answered. That's weird. What? What is it? What is this? So, okay, so Noah, here's a response from the heavens. And it's knocking. And what, what, why this image? It's in front of a church. And there's a date, looks like, down here, 11 which again goes back to the date, uh, that's the year after the, the formation of the Temporal Society or whatever. Huh. Is the girl meant to be an alt? Huh, weird, weird. Nineteen ninety-two. Maybe those are kids that were kidnapped. Heathcliff. Uh, Heathcliff is Mark's last name. It was Mark Heathcliff. So this is talking about Mark. Altercation evidence real. So Mark died when he opened his door and tried to fire on an altar. So I'm assuming maybe this is the evidence from that. Patrick Davis. Seventeen. 3.21 a.m. Mar oh, I didn't even have to explain it. Mark Heathcliff's bedroom. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So is this just footage of... I'm like looking around to see if there's anything hiding. What is that? They're they're zooming in on it to presumably draw our attention to it, but I can't tell what that is. What do you think it is? To me, it looks like uh, like a bridge in the distance or a light or something. It, it, it's very nondescript. Does it jump out? Is anything to you, Matt? The letter U. Right. I, I see that. Mm -hmm. You! Great. I'm glad we were able to confirm. Yeah. What do you think it means? Uh, clearly, Matt, the letter U here is uh, indicative of the underlings. U oh. stands for underlings, which we as humanity are to the heavenly entities that are coming down and stealing our roles and our identities that live in these different spectra, as it were. What if it's a variable? You know, also coincides because aren't we all variables in this great chaos of life? Wow. We're all unknowns. You. You. And that, my friends, is how you get an A plus in English. Huh? My argument was not very well supported, I gotta admit. 
I feel like I need to like brighten up every single one of these screens because am I missing stuff? So we're walking. Okay, so this is the church where they took that picture. They showed us the picture. Is there, is there something here? I, like the camera keeps panning to things and I'm like, oh, I should be seeing something. But I'm not seeing anything that's like, oh, this is definitely standing out or oh, the intruder's face is hiding in there. Or like, oh, there's an alternate hiding in like the bell tower. Okay, so this is where he took the photo. <laughs> this is just like bad home footage that I that like my mom took when we first got a camcorder. There is there something down there? I'm not seeing it. This shot freaks me out though. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. I would lay awake at night and stare at my closets. And it would look like this. Okay, so now we're at 8.30.92. So we're hopping around between dates. 92. Is that the door handle? The doorknob? Are they moving? Oh! They, <laughs> what is that? What just moved? Is it a door handle? Did the door open? Mm, don't want to know what's in there. Nope. 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 I'd, I'd love to see the conclusion of that one. Ah, to me that felt like there was something going on. Now I'm cut prematurely. Okay, we're going down to the basement. No, don't. Mm, turn on the lights on your way down. Hit every light switch on your way down. Run from light switch to light switch. Nope. Li lights, man! It's so heavy. Hmm, it's like claustrophobic. Just feel like a sense of claustrophobia in each of these scenes. Was there something in the corner? Sorry, real quick. As it flashed by real quick. No, there wasn't. Okay. In each of these, I keep expecting there... Like, I'm, I'm looking around for... A clue, a shadow, something. Okay, so this is, a, I'm assuming, the closet handle again. Ooh, hello. Hello. The intruder? No? What's this? What are you? Weird! Now it's blue. So we know the intruder keeps attacking people through the TV. This is blurry now. What is this supposed to be? I'm so confused. It's very unnerving. Remarks! Oh yeah, this was police footage from Mark's room. Footage implies that Heathcliff has been paranoid for a prolonged period. What? Reasons are implied. So, so, was there nothing there? And that's the point? The point was that there was nothing there? And so it makes it so... He was just paranoid and following, having a camera and watching around him all the time. 
That's weird. Mark's role in the story is very strange. So you have this like cosmic, these cosmic entities that are messing with everything on Earth. And then you have like the story of Mark, which coincides or is like a, a factor in that in some capacity. Or is, he's like caught up in the swell of it. It's interesting. The thing in the TV, though, didn't feel like the imposter. So, or not the imposter, the intruder. Because up to this point, the intruder has always had like that humanoid face or he's in the hood with the humanoid face, it feels like. Um, or they're connected in some way. Here it was just a shadow, which feels more like the entities that we've been seeing kind of in shadowy corners throughout the series. So to, for him to suddenly see it rising through the TV, the, I, I'm struggling. I need to think about this. I'm struggling a little bit. Now we're back to Noah. See, I feel like the religious stuff I have more of a handle on. This is the climax. Oh! No! No! Nope! Oh! I hate this. Okay, <sighs> I don't want to pause on this screen because I hate this screen so much. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the worst. Um, okay, I mean, so this is forwarding what we already thought, which is from the very beginning, right? Like these angelic creatures are these evil entities that keep coming in and messing with traditional Bible stories, for lack of a better term, and infusing them with this like sinister part right so here we had gabriel doppelganging as an angel uh and kind of seeding its idea out into the world here we have a different angel talking to noah and basically i'm gonna sneak a evil being creature animal in your two by twos onto your boat and it's gonna take over and again we have this idea of once something is in your mind it like stay, it's going to tell you a message, right? And that's your last message. So it sounds like Noah is about to go mad, mad, um, with that metaphysical uh, affect disorder or whatever they keep calling it. Um, so that's interesting. So he's kind of a pawn in all of this. It's also interesting that each time they bring up fear, uh, resist, like resist your fear. We know your fear. In the first one too, it was like Joseph. Uh, what do you fear? So these beings seem to prey on fear or they want you, they either want you thinking of your fear or I have to look at what the trend is, but fear is a common element with these things that keeps popping up and they're either weaponizing fear or trying to encourage you to like avoid fear for some reason. Oh, hey, uh, thank you. Uh, closed captions, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no wonder for Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. I mean, I don't know the passage per se, but I mean, this seems pretty self-explanatory. So this is outright telling us Satan disguises himself as an angel. There it is. Like, so these entities that keep talking to these biblical figures, Joseph and, and uh, Noah here, seem to be confirmed, I guess, or heavily implied to be Satan or one of his agents. The death of Mark... Weird. So again, okay, so we got the temporal thing, the death of Mark Heathcliff, 1981, revised 1990. 1981, and now it's temporal. The death of Mark, Heath Mark Heathcliff, why? Why here? If you or a loved one has recently been affected by the result of exposure to analog television mirrors, <laughs> contact your local authority immediately been affected by the result of it's always analog television man analog television it's just a dangerous force 
What? Financial compensation is not available. Gypped. That's the scariest thing in this video. <laughs> if you have any further questions in relation to the re recently issued television and mirror destruction order, call the number below. If you have any further questions in relation to the recently issued television and mirror destruction order. Huh. So they're telling people to actively destroy all these things around them. And this year is... What year did I say this was? I mean, this says 1990. But we don't know if this is actually that year or if it was just established. But we know we're later in the timeline at this point. So they're talking to us through the mirrors and through the televisions. Part of me wants to call this number... But part of me also recognizes that I need to do it via, like, a burner account because I ain't doing it. Matt! Wasn't well, a 555 number not real? I don't know. We can try it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that any number with 555 in it doesn't is not a real number. All right. Give me that phone, Matt. Why my phone? Because if your number gets out, <laughs> it's not my mean. number. <laughs> Here, I'm, Are you going to do it, really? Yeah. Good for you. I, I I would be too scared to do this. I'd have to get like a, a burner. It's not a real number. Oh no! Here, here. I'll let me put it on the microphone so that they can. I, oh, you got, oh, you got it. Okay. I have a mic. It's not a real number. Fine. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Did you unplug it? Ah. No, Matt. Ah. Are you becoming a doppelganger? <laughs> Matt, no! Don't go mad. You're you're. It's not the truth. It's We're all back. a delusion. We're back. Oh no, he's phasing away! He's phasing to a different spectral reality! Matt, no! Yeah, it's not a real number. I lose, I lose more workers th that way. <laughs> shockingly! Shockingly, we lose a lot of employees that way. Just yeah. phasing out into the ether. You're, are you an intruder now? Maybe. Oh man. Just a disembodied voice. Disembodied voice? Yeah. Are, you, are you like a creepy angel that's gonna whisper to me in my dreams? I might be. Wow. That's, I hope not. You're, we have, let's keep it at a safe, professional distance, Matt. We'll have to talk to HR. Okay, yeah, one. no, we're not, we're not letting that one happen. <laughs> Mandela Catalog for the Preservation of Security, Season 1 Finale. This is a weird angle. I'm assuming something's going to pop up at the end. This isn't just credits. Thank you for the tremendous amount of support. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Special thanks, too. Okay. Ah, you've been warning. Oh, Corey Extension. All the Man Mandela Catalog Patreons. GQ Magazine. Wow. Nice. Good one. Wendigoon. And that's it. That's it. That's it. That did not give me the clues that I was looking for. <laughs> that, that did not explain the things that I was hoping for there. Poop. I mean, it seems like it confirms that the angels are Satan. That seems pretty solid. That little, like, detail hidden in the, the closed captions. But the rest of it... I need to think about this one. Usually with these, like, live theory crafts, I have a good, solid idea of where I'm headed with things. And I'm like, oh, I can roughly see where the pieces fit together and, you know, the eventual theory is just kind of a formalizing of that and kind of shaping it into the narrative arc. Here, I don't know. It does seem to forward or kind of like, con not confirm, but like support my suspicion that Mark Heathcliff is has some weird time thing going on with it. The fact that the death of Mark Heathcliff appeared in like the, the time logo Leads me to believe, and, and the, you know, it connects with him being four and seeing an intruder and then him having the intruder later or the alternate later in his life. There's a weird time thing going on here. I'm not sure what it is. Like, I wonder if it has something to do with, like, maybe kids being kidnapped and then they grow older and show up to themselves in time later down the line. Like, a weird time thing that way. And is all of this trying to fight against or, like, save humanity from the entities that are coming? I don't know. I don't know. It seems like the intruder seems to be targeting... I don't... I, I, I wish. I actually wish I had a more articulate response for you guys right now. I wish I had a more cohesive idea of how all of it fits together. I think the idea of 
time travel with these individuals who may or may not have come into contact with an alternate and and or this entity that exists i think that's that's probably something there i think the ancient aliens mentality of like hey all the world's religions are influenced by an alien life form that came to us at an early age and that's just what we saw which is kind of the same thing with eternals where like the eternals came in and it's like you're we're you're religious figures now or whatever like i feel like that's part of this um they exist in other spectra it, it feels like it almost has like an uh, an air of the cthulhu mythos uh where you have these like giant ancient gods that speak these like mind-blowing truths to people like uh the classic thing with cthulhu right is like oh if you truly understood his size or his gravity or you know what this creature is you would die or uh you, you would die or, or like, your, your brain would melt or whatever. I, f I forget how it's phrased in the books. It's not brain melting. But this idea of, like, you cannot comprehend the true nature of Cthulhu to, for to understand these, these beings, right, is to just show how insignificant you are and you ultim ultimately, like, die at, from, like, how mind-blowing it is. Uh, and, and so this also feels a bit like that, where people who are whispered this truth from whatever spectra beings there are ultimately kill themselves. Like... There's a lot here that's rolled up and how it all plays together and bounces off each other is the thing that I'm, I'm missing. So I, I feel like I see three, four, maybe five different threads of story going through here, but how it all unites into one common item is, is what's really struggling. And it, it, it feels like it might be like, how does all of this relate to humanity either winning or losing against these entities? right? These, these otherworldly beings. Um, Matt, I'm, I'm curious. I'm tossing it over to you. I, I have no idea. No, nothing. Not a single clue. Um, any thoughts on the rambling nonsense that I've been spewing out for the last hour? Cthulhu's cool. That's a cool thing. <laughs> Cthulhu is cool. That's a cool thing to pull into all of this. Cthulhu is cool. <laughs> Matt. Mirror Matt. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you for the most part. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you for that insightful contribution. No, it's fine. It's Now, this is a hard one. This is hard. I like this. I like the vibe of this one. I like the themes that it's playing with. The visual language is really creepy, and I like that it's not reliant on jump scares, right? Like, there at no point is there, like, a, ha, ha, gotcha. It's literally, I see something move in the camera. It moves back. I don't know what it is, and that makes me uncomfortable. Like... Or I'm going to show you a dark hallway and I'm just going to make you sit in that dark hallway and nothing's going to happen, but you're going to be uncomfortable because you think something's going to happen. I like that. Um, some light ARG elements here. I like how they're hiding some of the clues in the closed captions, things like that. There's a lot to like here. Um, I'm just, I just, I'm curious for more, right? I'll, I'll come up with a theory based on this since this is the end of season one, but... I, it, it will truly be, it will probably be more of a hypothesis than a theory, honestly. Um, if I was a film hypothesis, because there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot to pick at. There's a lot to chew on, which I like. So, anyway, any closing words from you, Matt? Um, I also thought the soundscape was lovely. Really cool sounds. Right? Mm -hmm. there, are, there, It is, it, it's very effective from a sound standpoint, yeah. and I like the variety of music that they're pulling mm -hmm. in. Uh the use of silence is really interesting. Yeah. They'll use both, like, the ambient sound of mm -hmm. silence as well as, like, complete silence. Yeah. Which I find fascinating. Yeah. It's really, it's really, I mean, it's it's well put together. It's, and I like pulling in the old religious cartoons, which in and of themselves are kind of, like, weird and creepy. Um, that's a cool effect. Yeah. Across the board, it's, it's an interesting series. I'm excited where it goes. But, uh. Good luck sleeping tonight. I was recording an episode last night at 2 in the morning. Uh, not too dissimilar from Mandela Catalog. Uh, definitely has a lot of those ARG sort of like old school horror vibes. Man, I was, I was so uncomfortable all the whole time. I was looking over my shoulder constantly. Because even, even when I'm like in the house, I'm just like, and all the lights around, I'm still like, I'm alone in the basement at 2 recording an episode. 
paranoia on high alert. I'm like, oh, someone's going to definitely abduct me and turn me into an alternate or whatever. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'd love to get your theories or kind of your thoughts on kind of all the disparate things that we're seeing here and what they all mean. Uh, there's a lot to take in. So let me know. I can't wait to read it. And as always, remember, it's not a stream, but it was a video. Sorry, I got, dist I, I got distracted. I looked at my phone and my phone's alarm was going off and it lost my train of thought. Do you want to give it another shot? I, th I think we can. we do another shot? Yeah. Can, can we do it again? Yeah, we'll, thank I'll do a rewind effect. Yeah, you can rewind. Thank yeah. you. Can, oh. can, can we rewind it back? Yeah, there you go. Great. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Get out of here, phone. Okay, there we go. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to read your theories down below. And as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See you next time.